welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Erin Viner. And I'm Rebecca Rand. In our top story, Germany has admitted that the government of Mahmoud Abbas is paying salaries to the families of Palestinian terrorists. Following relentless questioning from a German lawmaker who heads his country's parliamentary friendship group with Israel, Berlin has acknowledged for the very first time that the Palestinian Authority pays blood money to terrorists and their families for attacks against Israelis. These payments are a known incentive and often serve as motives for terrorist activity. In response to MP Volker Beck, the German Foreign Ministry stated that the payments not only come from PLO accounts, but also partially from the PA's own budget. Germany maintains that its own $179 million of financial support to the Palestinians is directed at specific projects. Each year, Ramallah has been documented giving about $170 million to terrorists and their relatives, as is dictated by PA law. For his part, MP Beck is vowing to keep up the pressure on Berlin, saying that it is inconceivable that German taxpayers should finance payments to murderers and their families. Palestinians celebrated the news that several people were killed in Israel when a four-story parking garage collapsed in Tel Aviv last week. Scores were injured and dozens were trapped in the rubble as Israeli authorities frantically worked to save them. Palestinians and anti-Israel hate groups immediately began to cheer the tragedy. Social media was swamped with vicious messages praising the rising death toll and calling for more bloodshed. Celebrating the loss of innocent life is not a new phenomenon for the Palestinians. In the aftermath of the 9-11 Islamic terrorist attacks on America, Palestinians handed out candy and danced in the streets. Israeli officials have announced their full cooperation with the upcoming visit by the International Criminal Court, even though they're vehemently opposed to its purpose. Despite Israel's use of extreme cautions to avoid civilian casualties during the 2014 conflict with Gaza, ICC prosecutors are on a witch hunt into false allegations from Hamas that Israel committed war crimes, and they're coming to ascertain whether Jerusalem has the ability to launch its own investigation of the charges. According to its own statutes, The Hague cannot open such a probe unless it has determined that the country in question is unable or unwilling to pursue the matter itself. And that will be easy to disprove in Israel's case due to the sterling reputation of the country's national and civilian judicial systems. Jerusalem not only strongly refutes the Palestinian charges, but insists that the Islamist terrorists are fully responsible for the civilian death toll in their territory because they deliberately placed rocket launchers, tunnels, and other military installations in public areas. Israel's long maintained that it is Hamas who is guilty of war crimes for holding its own population hostage for use as human shields, as well as its deadly missile barrages of major civilian centers in the Jewish state during the conflict. Hamas even violated a humanitarian ceasefire, during which time it resulted in the deaths of two Israeli soldiers. In a related story, an employee of the Islamic University Foundation in Italy publicly called for the genocide of Zionists. Italian Jews and the Israeli embassy in Rome protested to the authorities when the Muslim institution's administrative secretary, Raffaello Villani, issued a call on his Facebook page for another final solution to carry out the complete extermination of Zionists. An Israeli soldier was shot and moderately wounded while guarding a group of religious Jews during their authorized monthly pilgrimage to Joseph's tomb in northern Samaria. The soldier was hit by Palestinian gunfire just a few blocks away from the holy site on the outskirts of the biblical city of Shechem. Earlier that day, the visitors came under attack by Palestinian terrorists, hurling Molotov cocktails, flaming tires, and rocks at their buses. Joseph's tomb lies on the outskirts of the Arab city of Nablus. Its location outside the jurisdiction of Israeli security has left the site vulnerable to Palestinian vandalism. It has repeatedly been desecrated and burned by Arabs. Despite great risks, faithful Jews have restored the tomb and continued to visit the resting place of the biblical patriarch. Another Palestinian radio channel has been shut down for encouraging violence against Jews. Israeli authorities shuttered the independent al Sanabel station for routinely supporting attacks on Jews, praising violence, and calling for Palestinians to join the vicious uprising against Israel. The station was located in the Arab village of Dura, outside of Hebron. The latest developments come amid heightened efforts to counter incitement in Palestinian media broadcasts. Just last January, a 15-year-old Arab terrorist admitted that he was inspired to stab Israeli mother of six Daphne Meir to death after watching Palestinian television broadcasts. 
The IDF is once again taking measures to ensure its reputation as the most moral army in the world. Chief of General Staff Gadi Eisenkot has stressed that Israel's rules of engagement are as honorable as they possibly can be, and that soldiers only shoot at terrorists who pose immediate threats to human life. Nevertheless, a new training program has just begun aimed at preventing the deaths of Islamist assailants. Since the eruption of the latest wave of Arab violence last October, many of the attackers were killed in defensive maneuvers. But now the army is working on teaching troops how to neutralize such deadly threats without weapons. The non-lethal techniques include the Krav Maga self-defense system that was especially developed for the Israeli army. When the General Assembly reconvenes at United Nations headquarters in New York on September 13th, diplomats will be treated to a special interactive event featuring the latest Israeli innovations in Africa. Ten different companies and startups from the Jewish state will present their cutting-edge technologies ranging from a mobile, soilless mini farm to an atmospheric water generator, solar energy mechanisms for power and water pumping, and a cancer-detecting medical device. Israel's UN ambassador Danny Danone observed that the world body is all too often a hostile forum where anti-Israel libels are spread, but that this event will provide our friends from Africa with a taste of the real face of Israel, a country full of technological innovations and the will to truly make the world a better place. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here on a beautiful sunny day in Jerusalem on our rooftop studio. My guest today is Itamar Marcus. He's the director of the Palestinian Media Watch. Itamar, thank you for being on the show. Pleasure to be with you, as always. Itamar, tell our viewers a little about what is Palestinian Media Watch. Palestinian Media Watch was founded in 1996. That's three years after the establishment of the uh, Palestinian Authority. Uh, we wanted to know what the Palestinian Authority was teaching its people and saying to its people in Arabic. We knew the English language message was peace promoting. Uh, we wanted to know what was happening in the Arabic world. And what we've discovered over this period is there are two different worlds. There's the English language world for foreign consumption and the Arabic language world for internal consumption. And this is what we're exposing. And what we do is we bring our findings to members of Congress, to all European parliaments, to parliaments around the world. Uh, and today there are many members of parliament and, and uh, many members of Congress who are using Palestinian Media Watch material as the basis for legislation. We hear all the time that Mahmoud Abbas and his leadership are our partners for peace. They're, they're the people who we're going to make peace with. But what are they saying over the last few months, just in the last few months, about Israel or about peace? The key to understanding the Palestinian Authority is not listening to their peaceful messages in English, but is, is watching what they're saying and what they're doing uh, amongst themselves. And I'll give you an example. Uh, during this uh, past uh, terror campaign that started in October 2015 and continued for many months, uh, which, over which 40 Israelis were killed, the Palestinian Authority and Fatah continued to promote terror during this campaign. Uh, so much so, when I talk about activities, they named sporting events during the terror campaign for terrorists who killed people in the terror campaign. I'll give you one of the most terrific examples. There were schools in Ramallah that named a basketball tournament uh, the Ahmed Manasra Championship Cup. Ahmed Manasra was the 13-year-old boy, 13-year-old Palestinian boy, who stabbed an Israeli 13-year-old boy in the neck and almost killed him. And from the pictures in the newspaper, we saw that the children participating and holding up this Ahmed Manasra Cup were 13 years old. So the message from the Palestinian Authority school system to those children in that tournament is if you want to be a Palestinian hero and have a cup in your name, named after you, you have to go and stab an Israeli 13-year-old in the neck and try to kill him. Look, I, I follow your work uh, pretty often, and I know what they're saying in Arabic. Mahmoud Abbas is not a partner for peace. He, he supports blood libel against Israel. He calls for terror attacks against Israel. His leadership literally come out and say, we need to kill Jews. They don't even say Israel. They're like, we need to kill now. Why is there this fictitious story that these are our partners for peace, that they want peace? 
Well, first of all, I'll corroborate what you're saying and reiterate it, that during this past terror war, there were absolutely explicit calls for killing Israeli by Fatah, uh, Palestinian Authority leadership. Uh, Jabril Rajoub, for example, even went so far as to say, we, we can't kill people, we can't kill Israelis by blowing up buses in Tel Aviv, but we can kill individuals because the international community doesn't care about individuals uh, who are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Explicit calls for murder. Uh, he's very close to Mahmoud Abbas, and there's talk that Jabril Rajoub is going to be the next leader after Mahmoud Abbas eventually steps down, and he's 81, he's going to be stepping down in the short while. So Palestinian leadership, yes, supports terror, yes, yes promotes violence and yes promotes murder. The international community uh, is fixated on a message that there's Hamas or the bad guys promoting terror and there's the Palestinian Authority or the good guys and they're promoting peace uh, and they continue to support and fund the Palestinian Authority in spite of all the evidence. But what's happening now, in spite what's happening now, is that the more work that we Palestinian Media Watch does in European parliaments, uh, uh, in Canadian parliament, in U.S. Congress, we have more and more members of parliament and Congress who are attacking the governments and saying this is insane that we're supporting the Palestinian Authority. In fact, European Commission, the European Union today, gives no more money to the Palestinian Authority directly to their budget because of things that we've exposed that were happening with their money. The EU today only gives money directly to pay salaries of civil servants, primarily people in the Ministry of Education. Uh, the United States government and Patterson, under Secretary of State recently said, is also no longer giving money to the Palestinian Authority general budget, again, because of our exposing that they're giving salaries to terrorist prisoners. So it's, we're beginning to chip away at this image of the Palestinian Authority that wants peace. And I'm hoping that with uh, a little more work in Parliament and, and, and a, little more, uh, a little more support from the communities around the world who will use our material, we'll be able to eventually completely erase that clean image that the Palestinian Authority does not deserve. So what you're saying, if that's true, how significant is the new Republican platform that basically says they're not supporting under any circumstances a Palestinian state, if the government of Israel wants a Palestinian state, they can, but they just support Israel. And what Israel decides, that's what they support. How important is that statement from the Republican platform if really there is no partner for peace? It's a, a very important statement because even should the Republican not get elected, it's putting it out there. It's putting it out there in the, in the general conversation about the Palestinian Authority that they are terror supporters. And this is what has to be out there. Uh, in order for there to be proper policy. In order, for example, uh, one of the things that's very dangerous is, is if the Obama administration, and there's talk about this, will recognize a Palestinian state in the Security Council uh, after the elections. Now, if this happens, this will mean the Palestinian Authority has been told, sent a message by the international community, you can promote terror, continue to terrorize, uh, and pay salaries to terrorists, and the international community doesn't see a problem in granting you statehood. That will mean they will continue being terrorists forever. The United States will have created a terrorist state. So it's very important that this message get out there that the Palestinians aren't a peace partner. Idamar, there are literally tens of million people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? That the Palestinian Authority has to be judged on their actions uh, and not on the statements that they say when they meet your governments. Their actions uh, show that they are active terror supporters, glorifying terrorists, paying salaries to terrorists. Their messages to their people are that terror is legitimate, terror is justified, terror is something that's supported by Allah. Uh, killing Jews is something supported by Allah. All these messages come from the Palestinian Authority to their people. And Palestinian Media Watch message to the viewers is tell this to your members of parliament, tell this to your governments. Uh, go to our website, palwatch.org download all the important material, send it to your leaders, because many leaders are supporting the Palestinian Authority out of ignorance, and you, just like, just like we, you also can inform them of the truth. Thank you, Edermar, for being on the show, and thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, Return to Zion with Karen Hassode.
Shalom and welcome to the Return to Zion with Keren HaEsod. I'm Eliezer Moody Sandberg, World Chairman of Keren HaEsod, United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Today, you will witness the fulfillment of biblical prophecy through the gathering of the exiles. God bless you from Jerusalem. Me and my family always prayed to come to Israel because it's a home, it's our home. Ten months ago, I made Aliyah with my sister. We are living together in Haifa. I'm worrying about my family because the situation in Ukraine now is really terrible. The past decade and a half has witnessed a frightening upsurge of worldwide anti-Semitism, unparalleled since the 1930s. Across Europe, incitement, desecration of Jewish institutions, attacks on Jewish property and acts of terror, including murder, are striking fear into Jewish communities. From London to Berlin, Brussels to Copenhagen, Jews are being harassed, assaulted and murdered. The situation is particularly intolerable in France and in Ukraine. In France, violent crimes against Jews have become commonplace. Avec la multiplication des actes antisémites en France, donc déjà j'ai peur pour moi, mais j'ai aussi peur aussi pour ma famille, pour ma femme, pour mes enfants plus tard. In eastern Ukraine, over one million people have been displaced. In the escalating chaos and lawlessness, Jews have once again become scapegoats, with many anti-Semitic incidents reported. When I was in school, my classmates uh, told me that, oh, you're Jewish, it's not normal in Ukraine, why you're Jewish? It was very hard for me to speak with them, to describe every time what I do in Ukraine and why I'm Jewish. I will give to you and your descendants after you the land of your sojourning, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. But Israel has always been the homeland of the Jewish people. Throughout their 2,000-year exile, the Jews prayed daily to return to the land of Israel. In 1917, Great Britain issued the Balfour Declaration. In 1920, Karen Ayasod was established to raise funds for this purpose. Since the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, Karen Ayasod has helped bring 3.5 million olim to Israel from the four corners of the earth. This is Bible prophecy come into fulfillment. It's not just my heart, but I can feel the heart of Abba Father. Abba Father in heaven is so pleased to see his children who are scattered all around the globe is coming back home. From India to Africa to Europe, record-breaking numbers of Jews are eager to come home. Aliyah rose dramatically in the past year, hitting a 10-year high, despite the security threats that face Israel. Karen Ayasod operates in 45 countries throughout the world. The Karen Ayasod Law, passed by the Knesset in January 1956, grants the organization a unique fundraising status. In close coordination with the government and the Jewish Agency for Israel, and in partnership with the global Jewish community and Friends of Israel, Karen Ayasod promotes Aliyah and other national priorities. We need you, dear friends, to be our partners in this noble mission of helping the people of Israel return home before the window of opportunity slams shut and live safely in its secured homeland. Karen Ayasod, with your generous assistance, has redoubled its efforts to facilitate every Jew who wishes to fulfill the biblical prophecy. Friends of Israel, the Holy Land and its people needs you now. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. Come join Karen Ayesod in fulfilling biblical prophecy. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, call us at 1-800-505-1665 or visit our website at www.khisrael.org.
President Abbas, since over the past several years you have refused to meet with me and sit down and negotiate peace, I hope you'll hear this message. First, your advisor, Sultan Abu Enan, recently called to slit the throat of every Israeli. Three days later, a Palestinian terrorist turned these words into action when he slit the throat of a 13-year-old beautiful girl, Halel Yafa Ariel, as she slept. She was a little innocent girl. She didn't deserve this. I ask that you fire this advisor because advocating genocide is not consistent with peace. Second, your party recently praised a terrorist on Facebook who murdered 24 civilians, innocent Israelis, in cold blood. I ask that you pick up the phone and instruct your party's social media manager to stop praising mass murderers. Impressionable children read these posts. They should be taught harmony, not hate. Such words seriously harm the chances of peace. Third, next week the Palestinian Authority will dedicate a monument to Abu Sukkar. Abu Sukkar murdered 15 people by detonating a refrigerator filled with explosives on a busy Jerusalem street. Rather than dedicate a statue to a mass murderer, I ask that you consider honoring a champion of coexistence. This will help educate future generations to love peace over war, compassion over violence. It will also help convince Israelis that they have a true partner for peace. Fourth, the PLO currently pays a monthly salary to anyone who murders Jews. This money provides direct incentive to commit terror. I ask that you stop paying murderers and instead use this money to found coexistence education. Teach tolerance, not terror. Every Israeli and Palestinian child deserves a life of hope, of tranquility, and opportunity. I will continue to work tirelessly for peace. It's time that you join this effort. Please stay tuned for the ICEJ report from the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. You know, when we talk about home, the first association is to speak about family. And this home indeed has become family for the survivors. It all started in 2010. Shimon Shabak, who directs today this house, he had a small soup kitchen here in this neighborhood. And he saw that Holocaust survivors were coming to his soup kitchen and he felt if there are needy Holocaust survivors, we need to do something about it. And he asked us to come and he showed us a small apartment where he wanted to host 13 Holocaust survivors. He said, can the Christian Embassy help us to purchase that building? I looked at the entire building, which was a four-store building. I felt the Lord talk to me and I said, Shimon, why don't we buy the entire house? I was driving away from Haifa and I thought, oh my gosh, what did I do? And how do we ever get this money together? I was pleading with the Lord, please help us. We have five months time to get the money together. For me, the biggest miracle was to see within two weeks people were sending us so much money like never before that after two weeks we could purchase that building. And within those five months which we had, we could even purchase two buildings. I see that there is a hand in this place. And without the support of the Nazi and the Nazi, המקום הזה לא יכל להתפתח. אז אני רואה בזה במדרגה ראשונה את הדבר הטוב ביותר שקורה, ולא סתם אה, באים לפה בני נוער, אה, חיילים, שהם שומעים שנוצרים, הם מחזיקים את המקום, הם מתנדבים במקום, זה מראה שאפשר גם את ההיסטוריה לשנות בצורה טובה, והשגרות הנוצרית היא דוגמה לכל הנוצרים בעולם, איך אפשר לעשות דברים אחרת, ואתם עושים את זה גם ככה. What I could see is that this house is providing an inner healing to those people to deal with their past in a, in a positive way. You 
know, as a German to see this home, and it's very humbling in many ways. You come from a country which uh, wrote the darkest chapter of Jewish history, and today to be here and to see that you are able to open a new page in the life of the Jewish people, that's it's very touching. People from all over the country, they are applying, we want to be at the home for Holocaust survivors. And the very sad story for me is that many of them we have to tell, no, we don't have the finances to add more people to it. So it's really my vision that by the end of this year, even we have a hundred people here, or that we can expand this house here in this next few years, uh, even for a couple of hundred survivors. Time is running out in Israel and we need your help to continue this operation here in Haifa and even to expand it. The keys are in your hand. Please help us to open the door and welcome them home. Are you a pastor or church leader looking for fresh vision for your ministry and a chance to see what God is doing in Israel? Join us in Jerusalem for the Envision Pastors and Leaders Conference. You will have the opportunity to connect with local Messianic and Arab pastors, receive exclusive briefings from key national leaders of the State of Israel, and enjoy special times of worship and prayer. To learn more about the annual Envision Pastors and Leaders Conference, visit envision.icej.org. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Erin Viner. And I'm Rebecca Rand, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us next week for all of your Israel updates.